Hey everyone, have you ever stared at a file with a bunch of strange tags, like the one on the screen, and wondered how on earth do I get the data out of this? You're looking at an XML file, and they're everywhere in the world of software. Today, we're going to demystify them. We'll learn how to read, parse, and extract all the juicy information you need from these files using one of the most powerful and widely used languages, Java. Maybe you've tried to open one of these files with the regular text editor and just got a wall of text. Or you've heard that it's a complicated process. The good news is, it's not. I'm going to show you a simple, straightforward method that will have you grabbing data from XML files in no time. So let's get started and turn that daunting wall of text into usable information. First things first, what exactly is an XML file? The name, XML, stands for Extensible Markup Language. It's a markup language, which means it uses tags to define elements, just like HTML. But here's the key difference. HTML is all about how data looks. It tells a web browser to make text bold or where to place an image. XML, on the other hand, is all about the data itself. It's a simple, plain text way to store and transport data between different systems. It doesn't care about the presentation. It organizes information using a logical, tree-like structure of custom tags. This makes it a great way to share data between different applications and services. So why do we use XML? It has some fantastic advantages. First, it's platform independent. A file created on a Windows machine can be easily read and understood by a program running on Linux or a Mac. This makes it incredibly flexible for sharing data across different environments. Second, it's human readable. If you open an XML file, you can often get a good idea of what's inside just by looking at the tags. For example, a tag like customer or product is pretty clear. This leads to its third advantage. It's self-descriptive. You don't need a separate document to figure out what the data means. The tags are the documentation. Finally, it's a standardized format. It's been around for a long time and is still a reliable workhorse for data exchange, especially in older and larger enterprise systems. XML is more common than you might realize. Let's look at a few places where you'll find it. A big one is in web services, especially older ones that use a protocol called SOAP. XML is the language these services use to talk to each other. You'll also find it everywhere as a format for configuration files. Many enterprise applications, like those built with the Spring Framework, use XML to store settings. It's a great way to handle complex, structured data that a program needs to start up. It's a major player in data exchange between different systems. When two different applications need to share data, XML provides a common language. And here's a cool fact. The modern formats for Microsoft Office documents, like .docs and .xlsx, are actually just zipped folders containing XML files. When you create a document, you're really creating structured XML data that tells the program how to format everything. All right, let's get to the fun part. How do we handle these files in Java? The great news is Java comes with excellent built-in libraries for working with XML. You don't need to download anything extra. It's all part of the standard Java development kit. The main library we'll use is the Java API for XML Processing, or JAXP. There are two primary ways to parse XML with this library. DOM, which stands for Document Object Model, and SAX, which is the simple API for XML. DOM is great for beginners because it loads the entire file into memory and represents it as a tree structure, which is very intuitive. SAX is more advanced. It's like reading a book page by page, which is great for huge files that might not fit in memory. For our purposes, we'll stick with DOM because its tree structure is perfect for learning and for the types of files we'll be dealing with. Okay, let's look at our first block of code. This is the setup for parsing any XML file using DOM. First, you'll see a few import statements. We need document builder factory and document builder to create the parser and document to hold our parsed XML tree. We also import file to point to our XML file. The core of this slide is the five lines in the main method. 
we first create a file object that points to our data.xml. Then we get an instance of document builder factory and use it to create a document builder. Think of the factory as a machine that produces builders. The document builder is the tool that actually performs the parsing. The builder.parse.file line is where the magic happens. It reads our XML file and turns it into a document object, which is the root of our tree. The last line, doc.getDocumentElement.normalize, is a good practice that cleans up the XML structure, like removing empty spaces to make it easier to work with. Now that we've parsed our file, let's start navigating our tree. The document object, which we named doc, is the very top of our XML tree. It's the trunk, so to speak. To get the actual root element, which is the first tag in your XML file, we use the method doc.getDocumentElement. Once we have that element, we can start getting information from it. We can get the name of the root tag using getNodeName. We can also check for any attributes on the root element using getAttributes. These simple commands are a starting point for all our XML explorations. Now for the real navigation. The most common way to find elements is to get a list of all elements with a specific tag name. We do this using get elements by tag name. This method returns a node list. Think of a node list as a collection of all the matching elements. To get to each individual element, we can use a for loop and the dot item i method. Now, a very important part of this code is the if statement. The node list can contain different types of nodes, like text nodes or comments. We only want to work with the actual element tags, so we check if the node type is element node. If it is, we cast the node to an element object. Casting just means we're telling Java, hey, I know this is a specific type of node, so treat it as an element so I can use its methods. This step is crucial because the element class gives us the tools we need to get the text and attributes we want. All right, let's get our hands dirty with a real world example. Imagine we have a small movie database stored in an XML file. Our goal is to read this file and display the movie title, director, and year in our Java program. The XML file is very straightforward. The root element is movie list, and inside we have a list of movie elements. Each movie has a title, director, and year tag. This is a common way to store structured data. Our task is to write a Java program that can navigate this tree and pull out the specific information we need for each movie. This is a classic data extraction problem that you'll encounter all the time. Here's the complete Java code to solve our movie database problem. We start with the same setup from before to parse our movies.xml file. Then we use doc.getElementsByTagName, quote, movie, to get a list of all the movie elements. We loop through that list. Inside the loop, we get the current node, cast it to an element, and then we use a new method to get the data. Get elements by tag name, followed by dot item zero and dot text content. Why do we do this? Get elements by tag name returns a list, even if there's only one item. So we need to get the first item in that list with dot item zero, and then we get the text content inside that element with dot text content. We do this for the title, director, and year, and then we print out the results. And when we run our code, this is the output we get. As you can see, the program successfully read the XML file, navigated the tree structure, and pulled out the specific pieces of information we wanted. We got the title, director, and year for each movie, neatly formatted on the screen. This simple example shows the power of the DOM parser for basic data extraction. For our second example, let's look at something more common in software development, configuration files. Many applications store their settings in XML. Here, we have a file named config.xml. It has a config root element and inside a database element. Notice that the database element has an attribute, type equals Postgres. Inside the database element, we have all the connection details, our goal is to read this file and grab these specific settings, including the attribute, so our application can use them to connect to the database. This is a very practical and common use of XML parsing. Here is the solution for our configuration file problem. 
We start with the same parsing setup. We get a node list of all elements with the tag database. Since we know there's only one, we can get the first item from the list and cast it to an element. Now the new part. To get the attribute value, we use dbElement.getAttribute type. It's that simple. Then to get the child elements like host and port, we do the same thing we did in our last example. We get the list of elements by tag name, get the first item, and get its text content. Finally, we print out all the values to show that we've successfully retrieved all the settings from the XML file. Our application can now use these variables to establish a database connection. And this is the output. We successfully extracted not only the text inside the elements, but also the attribute from the database element. This shows how powerful and flexible the Java DOM parser is for handling different parts of an XML document. So let's quickly recap what we've learned today. We started with the basics. What is an XML file and why is it so useful? We then dove into the heart of the matter and saw how Java's built-in DOM parser makes reading these files a breeze. We walked through the step-by-step -step process of parsing, navigating the tree, and extracting data. And we solidified our understanding with two practical real-world examples, one for a movie database and one for a configuration file. Now, the best way to really learn this stuff is to practice. So I encourage you to grab a simple XML file, maybe a public data feed or an applications config file, and try to parse it yourself. When you're ready for more advanced tasks, you can even explore concepts like XPath for more powerful search queries or look into the SACS parser for handling very large files. You've got the skills to start reading XML files in Java. So go forth and start pulling that data. And that's a wrap. I am Dr. Zeeshan Bhatti, and thanks for watching this video on Learn with W3 Schools. If this tutorial helped you, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more quick coding tutorials on Learn with W3 Schools channel.